Hello and welcome back to Adventurous Way. I'm Diana. As you may have seen from other videos, we bought 40 acres of land in Vermont and we plan to build a house. Now, we don't really have much of experience except for remodeling a laundry room and remodeling our RV. So we have lots to learn. And this is what I'm doing now. I'm taking a course at Yes Tomorrow, Certificate in Residential Design and Construction. And it consisted of uh, six weeks of online classes and today is the first day on site and it's going to be three weeks of on-site classes. In the online portion, we covered more of the design aspect, the architectural design, the design slash build process, how to develop an architectural program, and even had a stab at drawing sketches, drawing bubble diagrams, drawing plans, and kind of shaping uh, the idea of our next project. So I was attempting to draw um, some ideas for our mechanical building, that's what we're going to build first, and also some ideas for our house and even tried my hand at uh, building a model of the house. Now, these are very, very first initial sketches, but it's really cool to actually try to draw it because then you actually have to think about what's going to roof look like, where to put things, how tall the walls should be, what um, does a 312 roof pitch versus 612 roof pitch looks like. One of my biggest takeaways from the online portion uh, of the course so far is that if you are um, building a house yourself or you have it uh, custom designed, then you have a chance to think about what are all the activities that you want to do in the house, uh, what's your lifestyle, and then design the house according to that. Now, I'm very excited to be here on campus and um, take the three weeks of in-person class. We're actually going to be building a structure and uh, um, we'll be doing electrical and plumbing and all the things involved in that. The reason Matt is not doing this course with me is that when we scheduled this course three months ago, Matt had a hunch that our driveway contractor might be starting work at the same time as this course starts. And he had a good hunch and that actually turned out to be true. So today actually is the first day when the driveway contractor is uh, on the property and starting our driveway. We definitely wanted to have at least one of us to be there on site when a driveway is built. So because the contractor wouldn't be able to promise any specific dates. Um, so we decided that only one of us will take this course. I'm glad Matt is um, able to be there on site and uh, uh, make sure everything goes smoothly. Day one of the Yes Tomorrow course started out great. Uh, we started out with the basics and actually that was really useful. The basics of how tape measure works. Turns out that that end piece, uh, it moves on purpose so that you can measure both by clipping it on and something and pushing it against something. Also how to mark things uh, when you measure things so that they are still accurate, how to use speed square, um, and how to use um, basic power tools. How to use a circle saw and the fact that you're gonna use circle saw for most of the things. And actually just using it and, and seeing it around more and I now have a better sense of what is a circle saw versus table saw versus um, miter saw, things like that. Uh, before they're kind of all, they're all just saws. We're going to build two small structures that are going to be movable on skids. So we started working on the skids and we also attached joist hangers. I think I didn't realize actually how much by watching YouTube videos like Perkins Brothers, for example, another building challenge, I have uh, kind of learned some of the technology and it's definitely making it easier now to kind of put things together and layer knowledge on top of that as opposed to starting completely from scratch. All that YouTube watching wasn't to waste. The teacher to student ratio is fantastic. We have five teachers and we have uh, 11 students. So that's great support and you get personal feedback on pretty much everything you do. Um, so that's been really good for learning. We also learned how to do material takeoff, which I'm sure will become handy in our build later. At first I was planning to commute, but I decided to camp here and uh, one night down so far and it's pretty good. Tuesday, day two of the course was a long day, but it was super fun. We started the morning in the studio and then in the shop and we actually had a chance to uh, work with metal. We're building two structures. One is kind of standard stick built building um, or small structure. And the second one is timber inspired. And then for the timber inspired building, we were making gussets that uh, kind of put the trusses together. And uh, we're actually making from the sheet of metal. So we used the nibbler to cut the shapes, use the drill press to drill holes, and then a file to file down the edges.
that was super fun. I didn't really realize that metal is so malleable that you can work with it also without uh, welding. And then we did uh, more building. I think my biggest takeaway from day two was how much time was actually spent to make sure things are level and square and plumb and how much time it is worth it to invest into that. I mean, yes, you can learn about it and while reading and watching YouTube videos, um, but just experiencing that, I think I got a much better feel for it. And I'm sure whatever I build in the future is gonna be much more square level and plumb than I would have attempted to do. Also, I'm really uh, continuing to enjoy the teacher-student ratio. We have five teachers on 11 students. And you know, when I make a cut with a circle saw, I get feedback, like whether how, how I can make the cut better and how to hold the tools better and so on. That kind of one-on-one -on -one attention is fantastic. Day three of the course was another great day. We stood up two walls for uh, one of the structures. We learned how to lay out a stick frame built wall, like where to put the studs and how to lay out king studs, jack studs, support studs, and so on. We also learned a new tool, uh, it's a table saw, and also a sawzall. Use the sawzall to cut the OSB sheathing and ripping it to the correct length. It was fun. I think the best part of it is getting a hands-on experience, the tools, and uh, having a teacher look over how you're using the first time and make sure you're using it correctly and safely. I think me and Matt, we could totally build a house. And framing would probably be the most fun part because it's um, so visible. Like you do some work and then you stood up the wall up and it looks like a structure. On day four, we continue to build the frame of the buildings. And uh, again, new things I learn every day. In particular, a few new tools I tried out, like Japanese uh, pole saw and a Japanese nail set. And just in general, I'm keeping track of all the tools and equipment that we use because that's probably all that we're gonna have to buy when we build a house. So even things like a, like barrels to store uh, scrap wood or uh, shims uh, to make sure everything is perfectly aligned and level. It's so much fun to build a structure and uh, see the physical uh, results of it. Otherwise, camping is uh, better. I'm sleeping better and better. Luckily, it cools down at night enough that it's still comfortable to sleep. We also had a whole bunch of time in the studio and I uh, got feedback from the teachers on my designs. So far, I pretty much have the design down for uh, the shed. I drew a plan, two elevations and a section view. Next, I'll work on a house. It seems that every day we are learning about new tools. On Friday or week three, we learn about plumb bob and how to use that to plumb the walls. We also learn how to lay out and uh, put in rafters using a speed square and uh, kind of like knobs on it to make sure that the um, pitch is correct. Also learned for interior walls. Some people are doing a two by six walls in certain places instead of two by four so that you have more space to fit stuff inside like maybe ducting runs or the hardware of the back of the shower. So yeah, that's like another decision to make when deciding the house. On Saturday, I met up with Matt. Uh, we checked out the local uh, farmer's market, the waste field, which is actually quite big, the largest one that I've seen in uh, Vermont so far. And then uh, Matt <laughs> took me to the property and I saw the new driveway. But you already probably saw that in the previous video. On Sunday night, we had a guest lecture about HVAC and high performance smart um, uh, ERV systems as well. Um, so that is also interesting to see what's possible nowadays. I'm in my tent now. Um, I've been camping for um, the time I'm here at Yastermara and it has been great to be right on campus and not having to commute to school. So in week two, we continued to um, build our two structures and every day since we learn a new tool, we learn how to use a nail gun also learned how to use a tool to bend the um, trip cap flashing and uh, other tools. On Monday, one of our teachers took us on a tour on uh, nearby houses that are architecturally interesting and wacky. And uh, kind of some of them are experimental labs for um, architects. And uh, that was really fascinating to see and kind of get the creative juices flowing. On Monday night, we also had the guest uh, lecture by Peter Schneider from Vermont and Efficiency Vermont 
about uh, their modular home uh, factory that produces net zero uh, homes. Uh, that was also fascinating and he also showed us in the project uh, DC Microgrid where a small community in Vermont is uh, all powered by DC, which from living in RV, that's a pretty hard feat to accomplish in a residential setting. Uh, as for the build, we got a chance to practice a little bit of that design build cycle. Um, so an instructor told me and a couple others, hey guys, you figure out what kind of layout do you want uh, for the floor. We figured it out, took into account how much material we have and will we have enough material, but also had to take account how long it might take to do certain cuts, so for example, angle cuts, waste more material, but also it just takes longer while we're learning. So we went with square cuts, but we still did a um, pattern. And another similar uh, thing our instructor told us, here we need a countertop, but you get to figure out where it's going to be, what shape it's going to be, how large, and so on. So uh, three of us, we uh, figured that out and uh, built it the same day. So that was really interesting to experience that design, build, aspect that you don't have to have everything figured out in the very beginning in the design space and then going to build or even you can figure out the simplest version like a countertop across the whole uh, wall but when you get to the build stage you can adapt and change and uh, figure out something new so that was a really good lesson on Wednesday, we also had desk critique where a guest architect came along and gave us feedback on our uh, project designs. So these are our personal projects. And for me, that's our mechanical building and the house. And I got some good ideas and good feedback and my questions got answered. But um, my next step in design is to figure out how to do how to design a kitchen and bathroom layouts. These are the two structures that we built in the first two weeks of the course. We didn't quite finish them, but we got very close. And we, the instructor said we got closer than uh, we normally get to finishing. Uh, so for example, this one, the siding is not finished and uh, the roof cap uh, still needs to go on. And then for this one, um, the shingle roof is not finished. And I think some interior details are not finished. So this has a butterfly roof. It's a five fall pitch and um, both of these are going to go on the property with lots of trails and they kind of be in the woods and uh, they're called follies, like whimsical structures where artists and people can walk by and step by and soak in the views and get inspired. We have one week left of the course, but we're not going to continue working on these buildings. Instead, we'll have two days of electrical and two days of plumbing. And I think the last day will be kind of presentations of our designs. We already started with the electrical Sunday night just to kind of get the intro. And now on Monday of week three, it's going to start two full days of electrical. And we're actually going to get hands on uh, of wiring some boxes. Week three flew by super fast. The first two days we did electrical and that was an incredible lesson. We actually got to wire up switches and three-way switches and lights and power and understand how GFCI switches work. So that was really useful hands-on. And then uh, also we one of the floor plans of the students and we uh, walked through how to make an electrical plan for a house. So that was very insightful as well. Then we had two weeks of plumbing and not only plumbing, but also ventilation, insulation and heating. And um, just knowing more about those things makes me realize that I actually do need to make a plan and design for what kind of mechanicals we'll have in the house. Also, we had a hands-on experience of soldering copper pipes and we soldered a paper towel holder. And on final day on Friday, we had presentation on our personal designs that we had been working out throughout this course. That was super fun to see what everyone had done and also what uh, guest um, architects uh, had to say about and give feedback to each of the projects. This was V1 of my model that I did uh, at home during the online classes. And uh, this is V2 of the model that I built in the studio. I'm very happy with how far along I've gotten in my design of our mechanical building and house. And I'm super excited to get it developed further. We had the chance to come back on campus and finish the structures. And that's what we did. And here's the result.
I really enjoyed taking the Certificate in Residential Design and Construction course at Yestermaro, and I learned a lot. And I learned in ways that would not be possible by reading books or just watching YouTube. I feel a lot more confident that Matt and I can build our own home, but I also have a newfound confidence that I can think of something that what I want, I can design it, and then I can also build it. Best of all, I've made new friends who are also interested in building things. So let's go and build some things. If you also enjoy building things, then please consider subscribing and follow our journey.